Okay, well, this is chapter nine on cellular respiration from Campbell's seventh uh, edition biology. So this uh, chapter largely focuses on energy and energy exchange, how it's produced, how it's uh, used, and so on. Um, and all this energy comes through the process of photosynthesis um, done by the chloroplast or various other plastids um, using sunlight to produce energy and, and uh, driving the production of organic molecules. This is chapter 10. We'll get to that at a later date. We're focusing on uh, the mitochondria, among other things, which is the ATP powerhouse. Uh, first off, we have to talk about uh, catabolic and anabolic here. So catabolic uh, pathways um, use electron transfer to uh, uh, manipulate, uh, to, to allow their reactions to occur, to break down these molecules. Uh, thus, the reason why the catabolic pathways are exergonic, they release the energy. Uh, most, much of our discussion today will focus on the catabolic breakdown of glucose from start to finish. Um, here they mention uh, fermentation, which is one component, one potential component of the breakdown of glucose, uh, partial degradation of uh, sugars without oxygen. But we'll get to that uh, much later. Uh, cellular respiration is what we generally want to try and do. It's the most efficient, most ideal pathway for energy production. Uh, it does incorporate the use of glucose. Uh, and it does consume oxygen uh, as well, and it produces a whole ton of ATP. Now the uh, respiration, the reaction of respiration is a redox reaction, so it's important to understand what a redox reaction is, uh, and it's essentially transferring electrons from one molecule to another. Uh, one thing becomes oxidized and one thing becomes reduced. That thing which uh, goes through oxidation loses electrons, we say it gets oxidized, and that which gets reduced gains electrons. Uh, not always are we gaining and losing full electrons. Sometimes it's altering electron conformation such that there's slightly less or slightly more electron sharing uh, between covalent bonds, although we won't see a lot of this um, in this chapter. Cellular respiration specifically, uh, glucose is the thing that's being oxidized. Here C6H12O6 is glucose it's becoming oxidized into CO2, meaning um, it's losing electrons. And here we have oxygen being reduced, meaning it's gaining electrons. And I often like to describe uh, or to show that when something gains electrons, a lot of times we, quote unquote, cap the electrons or hold them in place by adding protons as well. So here we see instead of O2 minus gaining two electrons, we have uh, two hydrogens that are also added to neutralize those electrons or hold them in place, if you like. Uh, so a lot of the uh, redox reactions in uh, respiration or the breakdown of sugar here is, uh, uses NAD plus and NADH. Now these are uh, electron carriers. It's a, a coenzyme, NADH is. Um, and NAD plus is the oxidized form and NADH is the reduced form. Uh, multiple reactions that we'll see today adds electrons to NAD+, forming NADH, uh, and then uh, NADH will transfer those electrons to a different region within the cell to release the energy, uh, specifically the electron transport chain. Now, the electron transport chain we'll see is a very slow, I shouldn't say slow, it's a stepwise process where uh, everything is incremental and slow, small changes. Um, because otherwise uh, a giant amount of, uh, of energy would be released um, in the process and it would be explosive and we don't necessarily want uh, cells exploding while they're trying to make ATP. That's probably less than ideal. Um, so the electron transport chain passes electrons in a series of steps as opposed to one explosive reaction. It's basically from protein from protein or electron uh, carrier to electron carrier. Uh, eventually, at the end, uh, to do um, uh, to phosphorylate ADP and to make ATP through an ATP synthase protein. We'll get there. Here you see um, what we're talking about. We combine hydrogens and oxygen to form water in the end of respiration. That's one of the byproducts of water. And in the process, we're uh, producing a lot of ATP, and you do notice it's controlled release as opposed to explosive. So water is essentially the combination of oxygen, two electrons, and two protons all together. And these all come from different sources during the process of respiration. Overall, cellular respiration uh, incorporates glycolysis, although some people argue that glycolysis is a separate step 
It's not really part of respiration. Uh, then inside the mitochondria, we have uh, the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle um, and oxidative phosphorylation, which is taken care of by um, the electron transport chain. Um, and we'll get into the details here of all three of these. Here's another overview slide where this is in the cytoplasm of the cell, glycolysis, uh, where glucose is converted into pyruvate. This is a six carbon molecule converted into a three carbon molecule. And in the process, we produce a little bit of ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. We'll talk in a bit about what that is, as well as a few electron carriers uh, in the form of NADH. So charged or energized electrons that are produced get carried over to the electron transport chain later um, and that's an important step here. Pyruvate is then going to make its way into the mitochondrion, specifically the matrix where the citric acid cycle will occur and produce a little bit more ATP once again through substrate level phosphorylation and also additional NADH and another electron carrier called FADH2, both achieving the same thing but um, adding the electrons to the electron transport chain in different locations, and that'll become important later. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have oxidative phosphorylation, which incorporates the electron transport chain. And the final step, chemiosmosis, that incorporates the ATP synthase protein. And here's where we produce our uh, gigantic sum of ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. So here we see substrate level phosphorylation where we have a substrate, this thing in green, uh, with an attached phosphate group. And this enzyme, um, whether it's in glycolysis or in the citric acid cycle, different enzymes, enable the movement of this phosphate group and adding it to ADP. So phosphorylating ADP into ATP, and then the substrate also changes as well. Uh, all right, glycolysis specifically is the breakdown of sugar. I mentioned that glucose is a six carbon molecule, C6H12O6, and pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. So the, one of the important aspects here is that uh, when glucose gets broken down from six carbon into three carbon, the extra carbons don't disappear. We actually take one glucose and turn it into two pyruvate molecules, so two three carbon molecules. And this happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. It happens automatically, whether there's oxygen around or not, it just happens. So there's two major parts, the uh, investment and then the payout. So here what we're looking at is the investment, and that means that we initially put in two ATPs. This next slide here will show the investment. Minus two ATPs, this whole series of steps. Um, of course, we don't have to memorize the series of steps. You don't have to know the enzyme names. You don't have to know the intermediate names. Not important. What we need to know is that we invest or input two ATPs to make this process start to begin the breakdown of glucose, which we call glycolysis. This is energy investment. Then we get the energy payoff, and this occurs because we get ATP being produced at a couple steps on the order of four, giving us a net ATP of two. So glycolysis does actually produce ATP, which under extreme circumstances is a good thing because at least we get a little bit of ATP. And then uh, additionally, maybe just as or more important, we also produce this electron carrier NADH. In fact, we make two of them uh, in glycolysis, and this will be important for ATP production later in the uh, ETC. And we'll take a break here. <laughs>